G'day guys, Tom here in the Purpose Built Performance Garage. This thing you would have been seeing on our Instagram and social media lately, and it's got a lot of tongues wagging. An MT10 that we've completely re-engineered. This thing came into us after having a, an Extreme Creations turbo kit fitted and it blew the motor apart. We decided to get into it, make it run a bit better and more reliably, and then this is what we've turned out. Generally, I probably wouldn't run you guys through a project like this, but there's been a lot of excitement around it, so I thought I'd give you the details. Let's get into another purpose-built performance build rundown. Okay, so if you know anything about the MT-10s, they are a quick bike already. These run a standard compression ratio of 12 to 1, and then Extreme Creations make a kit that comes complete with the Garrett Turbo and all the plumbing you need to chuck on your bike, put it at 7 PSI, and ride away. Now, our rider Cassidy, God bless him, got a little bit too excited and wound his boost up a little too much and completely hand grenaded the engine. When we pulled this thing down, we found holes in the pistons. There was a lot of signs of overheating and stuff like that. So we knew we had to get in and make this thing firstly faster for him because that's what he was after and then more reliable so it wasn't going to blow up. Now, a few things we noticed straight away, and this is where Jesse really started to flex his performance brain, was uh, there was a lot of the charge piping running extremely close to the exhaust, which we identified straight away as dumping hot air into an engine. And then also generally turboed engines don't run a 12 to one compression ratio. So those are two things that we needed to address right away. Another couple of things that we've upgraded here were the intake, uh, getting that well away from the, the headers for the turbo pipe. And then we've also fitted an external wastegate, which is a request of our customer. The turbos, as they come, have an internal wastegate that we've welded shut, and then we've plumbed in this external one. So we built two setups here. This one is the dump to atmosphere pipe. And then for street legality purposes, we've also made a plumbed back in to the muffler setup. So if ever uh, Cassidy gets in a little bit of drama, he needs to change that out and have it uh, dumped back through the muffler, which I think is the legal way to do a turbo. Um, so we've built that setup and with a couple of bolts and a few clamps, you can chuck that straight on and right away. Now, before we get into a few more specifics on the engine build, you'll notice underneath the tail here, our intake. So this is something that Dylan fabricated up to feed the turbo. So we fitted a really large DNA pod filter underneath the tail. And the reason that we were able to fit this in, in between the rear tire and swing arm is because as the bike showed up, Cassidy had put on a six inch extension, which I'm sure he'll need now on the swing arm. A big billet piece that moves that rear wheel right back. So we've plumbed up, I think this is a three inch pipe with a, a bunch of pie cuts, which are, you'll see on this side. We'll get you a nice close up of that work there. Comes up to a big DNA filter and then that's linked up to the frame here as a mount. This was just more of a style piece, but also serves a really functional purpose in having uh, the standard intake just tucked underneath the chain. It was getting stuff flicked all over. It wasn't really great. So we've moved it well up out of the way. It's getting nice cool air off the back of the bike here. And it's also got a lot more leaderage, which is a really helpful thing when you're talking about performance engines. So generally, I think I've read before, it's like a 10 times your bike's um, capacity is what you want in your airbox. So the bigger your airbox is, the better your engine performs. And don't ask me about the specifics of that because I don't really know, but having a nice big pipe here and a big pod filter off the end has definitely helped our airflow in getting that air into the turbo and then charged up into the motor. Now sitting on this side of the bike was another really key piece. So because you have such close proximity of where your turbo sits and the way your header pipes run out from the engine, uh, we wanted to make sure that we were getting nice cool air into the intake plenum. So we've had a uh, custom intercooler made up from the guys at PWR Performance. We contacted them, let them know what we were doing and their response was, for lack of a better word, that sounds fucking awesome, let's help you out. So those guys were ultra helpful because this isn't really our wheelhouse usually, but when you know the right people and you have the, uh, the approach of let's learn and make sure that we get this done right, things tend to fall into place. So these guys were super helpful. They uh, tested this intercooler on the angle that we were gonna mount it. 
uh, without the fans and without the intake scoop to make sure that the efficiency was going to be right. They actually iterated the design after doing that to make sure we can get a bit better performance out of it. And then we've come to mount it up. And what we've done on the backside here is we've got a, we have a standard MTO1 fan and then a slightly smaller fan on the bottom side. So we're running two electric fans that run off a relay on your handlebars. So uh, if you're sort of in traffic, you flip that switch and then those fans are constantly pulling air through your intercooler to make sure this thing runs cool and reliable. Now, before we send this thing up to dyno, like I mentioned before, the engine was completely gone through, re-engineered. So part of that turbo system upgrade with the intercooler and fans and intake and all that sort of stuff was all leading into making sure that what happened to this motor didn't happen again. So Jesse got busy, pulled the engine down, we figured out where the weak points were, and then we addressed those issues. So he's gone in, worked out the leadage of the head and the compression ratios, and we've gone back to CP pistons, Carrillo pistons, um, talked with them and worked out uh, a piston design that would drop the compression ratio down to nine and a half to one. And then we've also gone in and upgraded the conrods as well. So these motors are, you know, they're high performance, but they're built very light. So the, the rods and stuff in the bottom end of this were pretty light looking, especially when you're putting boost on an already high compression motor. So we've got custom CP Carrillo uh, rods in there and custom CP pistons as well. And this is all done to make sure that this bike will not only run fast, but it'll run far and make sure this thing's gonna be reliable for our rider Cassidy. Now there's always a lot of unknown when you're building bikes like this because we aren't turbo specialists, but what we do have is coming from this, uh, from a point of first principles and starting from the ground up. And Jesse's really done a stellar job on this work and all that sort of stuff out and making sure that we give this bike the best possible chance of giving the rider as much fun as he can. So. We've taken this thing up to the dyno and these are the numbers that you're all waiting for. Jamie from Dynamite Moto, who does a lot of our tuning work, taking this up to him. We dropped this thing off and he was absolutely frothing at the mouth to get his hands on it. So he's running on the dyno, tuned up to 230 horsepower, running at about 10 PSI. Now, it's got a Delkovic muffler on it and that has a big baffle inside. So. Cassidy wanted this thing to run nice and quiet because he doesn't want to attract too much attention. And I think the polished intercooler on the side is probably going to do that enough for him. But so 230 horsepower, Jamie's removed the muffler, knocked that baffle out just to give it a test. And without any further tuning, it ran straight away at 260 horsepower. So we've sort of detuned that a little bit, put the baffles back in, and then we're going to run this thing in and then address it later if Cassidy wants more power. We'll remove those baffles, free up the exhaust flow a little bit more, and then readdress the tune and see how much more power we can make out of it. That's going to wrap it up for the MT10 project, guys. I'll give this thing a start, let it warm up, chuck the uh, the fans on that intercooler, see if we can't get that uh, wastegate letting off a few nice noises for us. And then if we get a chance before it buckets down rain, we'll chuck a bit of GoPro footage at the end of the video. You can see this thing on the road. But if you're really interested in this project, make sure you go follow Cassidy Glide on Instagram. I'm sure he's going to be having a lot of fun and sharing a bit with you guys too. Thanks for watching.